Welcome to the station crew. Enjoy your stay. We got the plant stat theory covered and figured out the best fertilizer mixes to use in this playthrough. Please check the previous episode first if you haven't yet. And now I will grow some plants with those mixtures. I got them written on this paper and I want to collect all the reagents first. But speaking of the papers, let me address some new of the comments. We got a request to do botany from Lux. So that's exactly what we're going to do today, putting this onto the active board. And uh, there were some other requests uh, to deal with the Atmos tomfoolery stuff. I just wrote it down as SM setup because everything will branch off from SM because it will be our source of plasma and oxygen. Then there is a request to do some black market stuff and a cytology making a cow. So this will be all the backlog for the next episodes to come. Going back to the mixtures, uh, now that we have them all written here, I want to check what else do I need in terms of reagents to create these mixes. Uh, so this one will be covered uh, by the fertilizer from the vending machine. This one we have the saltpeter. Uh, I have 15 units of saltpeter. And now that I can see that we have five units needed for this one and also one unit needed for this one, 15 cannot be divided by six. So I probably dump, bump this up to 30 units so that we will need 25 for this recipe and five units for this one. So going back uh, to our chemical mixer and for the saltpeter, I need uh, 15 oxygen. That's I think the all oxygen that we have actually. So it will block some recipes from us, but we will deal with it later. Five potassium and five nitrogen. That will give us 15 more of the saltpeter. And now we have 30 units of saltpeter. Other than that, I will need some uranium and unstable mutagen. So for the unstable mutagen, let me mix uh, first 10 units of chlorine, then 10 units of phosphorus and 10 units of radium. Now we got 30 units of a stable mutagen. And we will also need the uranium. And to get the uranium, I will need to grind some uranium sheets that I can get from here. Right, one will be enough, it will give us 20 units and I will grind it using this mortar and then put it here and dump into a test tube so that we can put it into our test tube rack. All right, I think we got everything that we need. For the ash, we will need some paper um, but I will create the paper there. Let me actually grab a little bit of water from this sink that we have in this area. The beaker is full of water. I got some planks, I got some plastic, and now I think I can head to Charlie. So this is the botany. You can see that there are soil patches here. Uh, they are out of water, out of nutrients because we grew some weeds there first and I got those weeds gathered in these plant bags here. We have the smart fridge uh, that is broken. Uh, let me repair it first because we will need it uh, to put some stuff that we grow from the plants uh, because we will have a lot of items and I will need this smart fridge. Repairing with the right click. Right. Now it can hold some items and I will uh, dump all of this inside the smart fridge. Here are all the weeds that we managed to get from the soil. There's quite a lot and I want to talk about a couple of other mechanics that I didn't cover in the previous episodes. So the soil needs not just the water and nutrients, but also light. We have some light fixtures here, but they're very dim and it's not enough for the plants to grow. It will be okay for the mushrooms, but the regular plants will receive damage when 
they are not lit enough. So I will put a flood light. We got it there. Now I need to wire it up. Then use a screwdriver to complete the assembly and then place the light tube. But we need also to place uh, a wire beneath the thing because it will not work off the area light. It will need the power cable. And I can see that here the power cable comes into the room, goes to this APC, and I need to extend this cable so it can reach this fluid light and lit the room with this. So doing it like so. We have our insulated gloves on. I got the cables and I am laying them like this on the tiles, connecting to this one and then fixing it back like so. Now if I turn it on, you can see that it's quite bright. So this is too low, but the middle one is okay for us. All right, now that we have the light covered, I also uh, want to talk a little bit about the pollination. Uh, we got some uh, mushrooms here that were growing next to each other. For example, this Chanteraria cluster mushroom. If we take a look at those and analyze them, you can see that they contain multivar and morphine. They got them because they were growing close to the other mushroom. And we want to avoid this kind of thing. It's caused by pollination. When two different types of plants grow next to each other, they exchange their stats and it will be indicated by the particles coming from them. And if the instability is higher than 20, they will also exchange their reagents. And what happens is, this is usually an edible mushroom, so you can eat it and get these nutrients into your system. But because it also has uh, the multivir, it will purge all chemicals from your bloodstream, thus removing the nutrients. So you will not be able to uh, feed yourself with these mushrooms. And it's, it's essentially a wasted mushroom. So this is uh, good enough only for a biogenerator or if you want to make some reagents from these mushrooms, uh, that, that will also be fine. But I will just uh, dump this all into the biogenerator for biomass. It will be handy later. So to avoid the pollination, I will need to make some windows. I have some glass here and a small window will be enough uh, to stop the pollination process. I just build one that will separate the soil tiles apart and repeat this for every single patch that we have here. Right, uh, we got our windows built. Now I want to check our patches. So I can see that there's a little bit of weed. That's fine. I mostly am interested in whether we have some pests that we need to be aware of. Right, we got the pests in some of the trays. And just easiest thing for me to deal with the pests would be uh, to dig out the patch and make one using the crafting menu because it will reset the soil uh, to be empty and have no weeds, no pests and nothing inside. And since we're already out of nutrients and water, I don't lose anything really there. So I will do this for every single patch. All right, so we got our fresh patches that do not have any nutrients or water. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to make four IV drips and I will need four syringes for that. I got them here. I will need some iron rods that we got here and some plastic sheets. And that will let us make the IV drip. So iron rods, plastic here. Right. And I will need four of them. We got our four IV drips. I will use them on the bottom side. So the bottom plants will all be on the life support and we will use our mixtures for these plants. And the top part will be for some random stuff that I just want to grow, but I don't really care about the reagents too much. 
Right, uh, good. I think now we crafted everything that we need. The only th thing remaining is to actually prepare the mixtures. And uh, let me get a little bit more of the wood. Like so. And craft a couple of barrels. So let's check what do we need uh, for our mixes. First, I want to make this big barrel filled with the first set of uh, nutrients. And for this, you can see that I need 80% of easy nutrient and 20% of robust harvest. So I will get just four bottles of easy nutrient and one bottle of robust harvest and just dump it all into the barrel. And you can see that the barrel contains exactly what we need uh, for the first fertilizer mix. I can actually use my, paper, uh, my pen to name the barrel, like so, so that we know that it's exactly that barrel for this mixture. All right, so I prepared the fertilizer mixes that we planned in the previous episode. Now let's take a look at what seeds we have here. First of all, I can see that there's a harebell. I don't really need it because it's a weed. We already have some weeds. I will just put it away to not bother for now. And this seed extractor UI shows us uh, all the stats uh, that the seeds have, uh, what kind of reagents we get on grind, what the seeds can mutate into, and what other uh, things uh, the seeds have, like what juices there are, what we get when we ferment the fruits, and uh, what are the traits of the plants. Uh, I can, I can immediately, immediately tell that there is a wheat seeds. That's good that we have it. So we will make it, uh, we'll make a bread out, out of it. Rice is also needed for some Asian food. Potatoes is probably the best source of food for me because it has large bites. It means that I can just eat it in one bite and it will contain a lot of nutrients. Uh, for now, it has only 10 potency, so it's quite low, but it will have a lot more. Poppy seeds is the... Uh, flower that has some libitol that will heal us from the brute damage, but we don't really need it right now. Uh, the grape is good because we can make some wine out of it. It has some sugar. Maybe we can make some raisins by drying the grape. Corn is also nice. We can make some corn starch out of it. Carrots is good for oculin. Like if we damage our eyes uh, when we weld some stuff, we can heal this damage to our eyes by eating the carrots and ambrosia vulgaris is just a medicine and drug uh, leaf that we don't really need right now but i will just plant every single instance of the seeds that we have one of each so the star thistle is also a weed so i will ignore it and uh let's think so what i care most about what i don't want to mutate in any way i will put onto the bottom so wheat and rice will be here uh, other than that, uh, probably some carrots and grapes, they will go here. Actually, let me uh, put the potatoes here. Corn will be on this tile. And this uh, plants that provide some healing medicines will be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill the topsoil with easy nutrients so that this gain as much potency is possible and just give me one harvest so that I get some of these fruits and some of the seeds back to not lose them. But the bottom stuff will be more important for the food and I will make sure that I have a good fruits out of them. All right, so I filled the bottom patches with our mix of 20% robust harvest and 80% easy nutrient. And the top ones will be just on easy nutrient and I have this pot. Uh, with the uh, easy nutrient that I will uh, use to top up this soil and uh, that because the bottom ones will be on the ivy drips so when I connect an ivy drip to a soil it will start uh, filling the soil with uh, the, con the contents of the container that is attached to it and it means that I don't need to attend the soil so I'll just attach all ivy drips to this ones and start planting our plants while things are growing I want to talk a bit about traits. We have some grafts here and I was uh, gathering them from the weeds that we got before. And from all these grafts, I'm most interested in this mushroom grafts 
because applying a mushroom graft to a plant will make it a mushroom that will be uh, growing even when there is no water and that's that's most important thing because we are running out of water this high capacity tank only have 150 units less left and when I apply this graft not only that it will give the mushroom a trait to a plant it will also bump up the stats of the plant because these mushrooms are quite good tower caps is actually the best thing that you can use to graft onto something but also to uh, get multiple harvest I'm going to graft the plants onto themselves. This way, when I graft it, I will receive a plant graft with a particular trait. Uh, if I analyze a, tra a trait, you will see that it says that grafting this plant will give me a perennial growth. So even if the rice is destroyed when I harvest it for the first time, if I graft it first, just damaging it a little bit, like for two health, which is insignificant, I will get a graft and then I can apply it to the rice itself and harvest it. So this way I will not lo lose the harvest. And I, right now I'm just waiting for all these uh, plants to become mature. Also topping up uh, these plants on the top. And soon you will start seeing the wheat or rice uh, getting some fruits ready for us. The perennial growth is by default uh, available on many plants like these grapes. They already have the perennial growth, so I don't need to do the separation for this. But for other plants, it will be quite useful. So you see that right now the wheat doesn't have any traits and I can graft it, apply the graft to the wheat and then get the plant back and harvest the wheat. And you can see that right now it has the perennial growth. I got some wheat into my bag and I can do the same with our, all other plants to just not, not lose the harvest. Do the same with the rice, apply it to the rice and harvest it. It will continue growing. Uh, for the grape, I can just graft it and I will not apply because the grapes already have the perennial growth. I'm getting it like that. But instead, uh, let me apply the perennial growth uh, to this carrots and you can already see that we have another harvest for wheat ready I can get it once more now we start getting some nice fruits for now they are very small because the potency didn't rise yet uh, but we will wait a little bit and for now we'll just keep harvesting the plants and putting them in this, the smart fridge and uh, I will go back and forth collecting all the fruits and applying uh, the perennial growth to the remaining plants. Right, we got uh, one of our plants destroyed. It was poppy, but I don't really care. I will use some other seeds to plant uh, something else and uh, get some other fruits out of here i don't really need anything this there are only the weeds remaining but i have seen that there is a banana peel in this trash can and i can extract some seeds from this banana peel and plant a banana tree and get some bananas going all right i see that the ambrosia vulgaris uh, got a little bit of weeds going on and I'm using this cultivator to reduce the weed stat on the trays. Right, so I have been running around gathering the fruits of the plants. So you can see that we filled our smart fridge pretty much. We have more than 100 wheat, rice, a lot of potatoes. So we're good to go for the cooking episode. Uh, but I want to also try it out some mutation and I want to select stuff to mutate. We got many of the seeds topped up with 100 potency in yield uh, and I will pick some of them to also create some other mutated versions. You can already see that the Ambrosia deus is a new species that we didn't have and it got mutated from the Ambrosia vulgaris. Um, so, but I don't really need it right now, it just provides some other uh, healing medicines, uh, which uh, we will not use for now. Uh, I want to get uh, some more interesting stuff for cooking. 
and to create a biomass for. So this potato is very nice, but we can make a sweet potato out of it that will have even more uh, good contents. So I will mutate the potato seed. I will also mutate the wheat because it will get us either oat or meat wheat. Uh, if we get meat wheat, we will be able to get some meat steaks out of basically <laughs> growing them from the soil. Uh, and another thing that I would like to mutate will probably be uh, one of the weeds. So we have these logs here. Uh, I will get the tower cap log and make a seeds out of it and mutate it into another species uh, that's, that is called the steel caps. Instead of wood, it will be giving me iron and it will be uh, just just providing us a way to get iron out of nowhere uh, because right now there is no reliable source of iron here. So these are my three selected species. And uh, also I want to make sure that my wheat is of finest quality and I will use this seed to also create uh, some high endurance wheat combined with uh, the graft from the tower cap mushrooms. Uh, we will be able to bump up the lifespan and endurance of this wheat quite high and get the best possible floor out of it. So I will take this leftover uh, beakers and clean up the trace and uh, put our new nutrients in. All right, so we have our beaker set up. So these three are having the ash, multiver, unstable mutagen, and uranium. You can see that the contents are just a bit higher than one unit, exactly what we need. And this fourth one contains in the enduro that we will use to bump our wheat seeds up. Uh, I will apply, apply the graft of the tower caps. So let's check how it the stats are changing. Right now it has lifespan and instability and endurance like so. And when I apply the graft, the endurance went up from 15 to 38. The lifespan went up from 25 to 60. And it should be quite good, but I can even bump it further if I apply a second graft to it, like so. Thus uh, changing it to 73 lifespan and 47 endurance. That's quite good. And the endurance will be bumped up from this Enduro Grow uh, that we have in this beaker. And for this patches, I will plant the tower cap so that it will mutate to steel caps. Uh, mutate the wheat, hopefully, uh, to get the meat wheat. And potatoes should yield me the sweet potato plants. Let's check how the stats are changing. So right now the potato plants have 11 of instability. But every tick that happens uh, during the botany growth cycle, that is 20 second, uh, you will start seeing the messages saying like the pests behave oddly, all uh, the plants starts uh, being unusually reactive. And you can see that the potatoes got instability increased from 11 to whopping 24, uh, just in, in, in a brief moment. So that should let us mutate our plants very quickly. And since we're using only one unit of uranium and unstable mutagen, once the plant is mutated, I can just detach the ivy drip. The content of the uranium and stable mutagen go below zero, and only the multivar and ash will be applied with stopping the mutation for the plant. So I can control precisely when I want my plant to mutate and, and where, when I don't want, do not want to mutate it. You can see that the endurance is growing for the wheat, so that's nice. We'll keep an eye on that. It also has some perennial growth and it's a mushroom and I, I don't need any water for that, uh, but this should be fine. And I will uh, apply the mushroom graft to this also when they mutate. Right, perfect. You can see that we got our first meat wheat and odd, so I will stop this uh, wheat from producing anything and I will actually remove it from 
the soil so that we don't need to bother with it. Okay, now you can see that they, they, they turned into the sweet potato plants and I'm turning off the IV drip with this mutation solution and I will uh, put it back to the barrel. Let's scan the sweet potato plants. So now they have uh, the instability of 7, potency, yield, they're quite low and I will replace this all contents uh, with our best fertilizer mix to bump the stats uh, rapidly. So I will put it into the ivy drip, clean the tray and attach the ivy drip to the plant and we'll see that right now it has 3 potency and 1 yield and it has this d saltpeter saltpeter and easy nutrient mix and let's observe how quickly we'll gain the stats and give us the best possible sweet potato plants as, pos as we can get. I will also put it on the mushroom uh, uh, trait so that we will not need to bother with the water running out. And same goes with these steel caps. So you can see that they now grew. They already have high potency and yield. So I will just leave them uh, running uh, on this nutrients that they have. Uh, I think that will be enough. All right, and this wheat already gets the top endurance, potency and yield. So it's pretty much the best as we can get. Uh, it will already give us the best possible uh, flower that, that we can have. And uh, I will just gather a little bit more of it, uh, considering maybe putting a little bit of easy nutrient in instead of this Enduro Grow. We got our first harvest of the sweet potato plants. I forgot to put the perennial growth onto them, uh, but but I just replanted them instead. And you can already see that after the first harvest, they get the top potency, the top yield, and the production speed is almost the top as well. All right, so we got our first harvest of the steel caps and it gave us the steel caps logs. They're quite low potency because I, I forgot to get, get rid of the pest. But you can see that if I break them down, uh, like I do with the normal logs, they give us iron rods instead of the wooden logs, which is quite awesome. So if we run out of iron, this will be our reliable source of iron in the case of emergency. So like, let's, let's take a look at the sweet potato plates. Right now they're maxed out, high potency, high yield, production speed of two. Uh, they have the perennial growth and I'm just waiting for them to start producing. After that, we will get a lot of sweet potatoes that are of highest quality. And uh, they have uh, like 10 vit vitamin, 10 sugar and 10 nutriment, which are all very filling reagents. I will be able to survive just on, by eating the sweet potato plants uh, for a long time. Uh, and this is also the the best possible uh, fruit for me to put into bio generator because it, every single sweet potato will yield me 20 biomass in the bio generator. All right, so we got our monster sweet potatoes. You can see that it contains 10 vitamin, 10 sugar and 10 nutrients. I can eat it in one bite and it will basically make me stuffed just from one potato. And you will see how my stats are changing uh, and how my bloodstream contains quite a lot of nutrients. 
I, st I still keep getting a, a lot of sweet potatoes. Every t two, uh, two cycles, this plant will yield me potatoes. Uh, I have put it on ash and it will continue to produce until I want it to stop. Uh, so where we can use this big amount of sweet potatoes is the biogenerator. I have already created uh, the Enduro Grow in this biogenerator, uh, but let me just briefly cover what, what it does other than that. So you feed it any food item, like these potatoes. I just dumped a bunch of potatoes into it from the plant bag and click the generate button. It extracts the nutrients from all the sweet potatoes and makes BMS equal to the units of extracted nutrients. And this biomass may yield us some uh, different reagents. If we put a beaker inside, we can make some synthet synthetic food. It's quite bad, uh, but it will be okay if you need it for something other than the food items or you just don't care about the quality of your ingredients. It will let us make monkey cubes, which can turn into monkey and make basically uh, up and end the source of meat. It will be also a low quality meat, but it will unlock a lot of other stuff for us. It can make seaweed sheets, which are needed for the sushi recipes in the cooking. Uh, it will obviously make uh, some left for that easy nutrient, robust harvest and endure grow regions in case if we run out of them in the Nutrimax vendor. And there is also a material tab where it can print a lot of leather without needing us to butcher any carbs or xenomorphs. Uh, it can make cloth out of the biomass, it can make cardboard, paper. Instead of cutting down the board, we can just print it here. A sheet of rolling paper, which will let us dry any fruit and roll it into this paper to basically smoke the contents instead of digesting them. And also candles for making some cakes, cakes and it's a quite a cheaty uh, machine, if you ask me, because it will let you make a lot of stuff uh, for relatively easy to get biomass. And we will use those monkey cubes to unlock uh, the technology that we desperately need in this playthrough. Right, so I will continue gathering the sweet potatoes to get a bit more of them. And uh, we got ourselves a, a full smart fridge of different ingredients that we can use for cooking and the next time we will actually try to make some interesting dishes out of everything that we gathered in this episode. Mm -hmm.